Homework B, we are optimizing predator behaviors and we have this spider pulling some meals across a patch of ground. Uh, they're pulling it more and more aggressively. And then uh, we have this like weird thing that happens right here at the time spot where the spider stops pulling it and just lets it like kind of coast across. And like, admittedly, that's kind of an unrealistic scenario, but like we're pretending that's what's happening. So uh, we have the first time where it's just pulling it very softly, pulling it a little bit harder, pulling it super hard. Okay. Uh, so when the spider pulls harder, the slope of the uh, graph gets steeper. Since the slope is uh, steeper, uh, or we could call it increasing, the acceleration is greater. And we know that that's true because on a velocity versus time graph, the slope is the acceleration. So if I have a steeper slope, I must have more acceleration. When the st spider stops pulling, the slope of the velocity versus time graph becomes zero. And if the slope is zero, uh, this means that the acceleration is also zero. Uh, and that's why we're getting the constant velocity after the spider stops pulling, because it's just coasting across this like magically frictionless ground. Great. Uh, and then we go down, oh, there's one more spot or a couple more spots to this. Spider repeats the experience, but now it's pulling with a constant force, but different sized meals. So we have this one right here. This is my one gnat meal. If we have two gnats, uh, two gnats. Uh, with two knots, we're going to get less acceleration because we know that acceleration is equal to the sum of the force over the mass. I just doubled my mass, which means I would get half the acceleration. So something that looks like this. And then if I went up to all the way up to four knots, it's going to be one fourth what it was before and look something like this. Cool. So there's my graphs. Uh, this should probably be a little bit more straight, but um, this is a quick homework video, so it doesn't have to be perfect. All right, last question of this page. Uh, following statement written, describe what happens after the first five seconds when it's no longer pulling. We want to cross out the incorrect statements and explain why they're uh, incorrect. And the part that we're going to uh, cross out is this part right here it will decelerate and stop. That's not going to happen. We have uh, uh, sp spider stops pulling. Oh, I got to cross more out. You can't run out of force. Force is either something you have or you don't have, but forces are what cause changes in motion. So there's a like a little bit two different answers to this. We could just leave the statement as is. After the spider stops pulling, the meal will travel at a constant speed. And we could answer that. Um, I want to move this so you guys can see the checklist. That's better. Um, we answer the question directly because I just showed which parts are, are true. The law of physics that I want to talk about is that Newton's first law Object in motion stays in motion. So now I've stated a law of physics that's always true. Um, and so I'm going to say like, so the meal would stay in motion. Unless, and this is where I bring in another uh, physics, uh, another part of Newton's first law, unless acted on. Something's starting to break. Uh, hopefully my video didn't just get super choppy and horrible. But it might have. Um, so I've taken care of my law of physics. Oh, man. I really hope I don't have to remake this video. 
I've connected it to my scenario and I've used appropriate uh, physics vocabulary. The only other piece that you could add in here afterwards is if you do want a justification for why that meal would probably eventually stop, there is an outside force acting on it more than likely, except in this ridiculous problem, which is the force of friction. So it might eventually come, come to a stop, but not because it's running out of force. It's going to run out of it's going to stop moving because there's an outside force of friction that will cause it to decelerate and stop. That doesn't just happen by itself the way this, uh, this answer seems to make it seem. So uh, that's how you do homework number two. Thank you so much. Now let's stop the video.